Hi, my name is Sandy Baird, and I'm here with Chris Aaron Felker, who is the chair of the Republican Party here in Burlington. There might be a, two or three Republicans, right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. We've got a few, and actually... But not on city council. Not on city council yet, but, um, you know, it takes time to rebuild parties up and build a real movement, and uh, in the last year of my tenure as the chairman of the Burlington Repart Republican Party, we've increased our membership, our active membership, by at least 12 percent so 12%. far. 12 percent. So, Terrific. Know, uh, yeah. I mean, I think I think of the Republicans as all in the banks. You know, they're all <laughs> bank presidents and all that stuff. So I would appreciate if we got some of that were running for office because in many ways there's very little balance on city council, it seems to me. There is very little balance um, on city council. And there are um, a lot of voices who'd like to be activists and, and talk about um, causes that are important to them, but there are very few members of city council that actually represent the working class in, and the working class interests. We see current makeup of city council. Well, they love to talk about their activism and their activities and how we could direct the city to be a more socially just movement. They don't hesitate time and time again, every time a resolution or something comes across their desk that will increase the cost of living in Burlington, increase the taxes in Burlington, uh, they right. vote for it. They vote for it no, every I time that. without any reservation or any kind of objection to it. They're and like, I love the, this. And that's the Democrats as well, you think? Yeah. They're, well, the, more, they're the more conservative, actually, party right now. They are. Right. And there are, usually you will hear a couple of an objection from at least one Democrat and uh, an independent when it comes to any kind of bond vote or, or resolution that will result in increasing taxes. And what about the high school, though? What's going to happen? Wow. Do you think? Well, with, with school bonding votes, they tend to win. I know. Because it's know. one of those subjects that the electorate is just like, well, it's right. for the kids. And, you know, we all, we all can agree. It's yeah. not, we can't spend too much on our children's education, right. but we can spend more than the taxpayers can afford. Exactly. And um, this bond measure, which the mayor has already admitted, exceeds the city's bonding capacity, recommended bonding right? capacity. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, the mayor, for over a year and a half, spoke about how the city's bonding capacity was maxed at, uh, would be maxed at 150. Um, and that's what the cap should be for the school. But the district came forward with this proposal for $165 million, right. which exceeds 150. And uh, they all voted for it excitedly. You can you can go home and you can watch it on on CCTV. But, the well, city council but you're meeting. not saying exactly to vote. Well, I, we don't need to go there. We need to talk about other issues. I think that people should vote yeah. their conscience on yeah. this. Just knowing that there is an embedded 15% property tax increase in this, which will affect you if you own your home, but it will impact renters in Burlington yes, more than it will homeowners because um, if you are a renter. The person who owns that property okay. is required to pay 120% of the assessed value, so your rents are wow. going to go up. So vote your conscience. I'm not going to tell you what to do, just vote your conscience. All right, okay, all right. So I will. Thank yes, you very much. All right, but I want to get back to something that um, you've been involved with lately. And I was there, I observed what happened at the demonstration uh, for Outright Vermont. They had a fundraiser and a tractor pull, and you were there, and they were there, and I was observing that scene, and what I saw was um, rather, um, I wasn't certain of what to think, because it seemed to me that, many, that you guys had been blocked in your ability to speak. And So anyway, you tell me what happened. Absolutely. And, and when we're getting started, I'd just like to state that my activities and activism along, um, involved in that day were not representing, I was not representing the Burlington Republican Party as chairman. Right. I was representing a newfound organization that I founded with um, historic gay rights activist Fred Sargent, and that organization is the LGB Alliance BT, and that's what I was there um, on behalf of that day. Okay, but wait a minute, let's go back a little bit. So there was Outright Vermont, which, which I could observe seemed to be mainly young gay people. Is that I don't true? believe they'd call themselves gay. I think that they're the groups that call themselves queer, uh, especially oh. since uh, the Pride Center of Vermont has now issued that the term gay is exclusionary. Ah, really? What's that all about? Well, there's been a schism between um, the many members of the lesbian, gay, and bisexual community and the trans queer and... Um, oh, really? Yes, since 2015. Mayor Murrow Weinberger even admitted this uh, back in... Uh, I believe it was his September 21st morning meeting. He's, he was very aware that since 2015 there's been a schism here. Well, okay, so go back a bit. So there's the, what is this schism? Because I didn't know a thing about it. So there's a schism 
in the outright movement? No, there's no? a schism within the LGB community. Okay. And here the LGP in yeah. for people who are lesbian, not gay, and bisexuals, right. and then the TQ is for trans and uh, queer. Okay, and they have branch. They are now separate. Is that well, correct? Well, no, they're together at Outright and in um, and in Pride Center. But one of the reasons for our activism and our motivation in in creating this new organization is because we do not believe that those organizations accurately represent our interests or our policy objectives any longer. Okay, there so was a shift after the pa after Oberfell and marriage equality, where many of the historic gay organizations mm, pivoted their missions to um, transitioning children. Wait a minute. Okay, so you're talking about the T. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. but you're also saying that there's a split between those. I guess gay people who divided on that issue, is that correct? Many of us are divided on this issue. Okay. You've heard for years of lesbians that um, that have been questioning, gender critical lesbians, lesbians that are unhappy with the advice that we're getting from our local gay charities telling us that we need to be more accommodating and accepting Two. of individuals that aren't representative by our um, sex-oriented fields that we are interested in. Uh-huh, but I still don't know what you mean. By whom? Exactly. Okay, <laughs> so there there d does seem to be some kind of a political shift, I correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, all right, and so what I observed was that shift is often to do, um, and I've seen this, by the way, in the feminist community, too, with those who believe um, in transgender rights and those who kind of question that, would you, is that fair to say? I believe that that's a good, accurate depiction of it. Uh, right. we, we worry because with the, um, with the onset or the uh, rapid advancement of what is referred to as self-identification, uh, where one does not have to actually medically uh, transition to the opposite. Um, they just have to. They just have to say it. Uh -huh. um, that many women, and rightfully so, recognize that the ability for a male to just self-ID as a female fundamentally risks all sex-based rights. All right, so, and that was playing out, I thought, at, the, at this outright demonstration that you were at, correct? Yes, ma'am. We, we showed up to uh, stage a silent protest. Um, Primarily because, I mean, we have objections with many things that Outright does in addition to what Pride Center does, but safeguarding children should be paramount, and Outright Vermont in particular engages in, um, well, they support what's called the so-called affirmative care right. model of yeah. transitioning young children, and that includes medically transitioning. Yeah. Um, these with hormones. With hormones, with so-called puberty blockers. Both of these are being used off-label. Is that um, they're being used in this in the this city? Do you think? Oh they're? yes, they are. Okay, yes, at where are. at UV at where? In the well, hospital? there's the UVM um, gender clinic, and there's also Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood is actually one of the largest medical transitioners of, of people but in the United do, States. They don't. They don't do the surgeries, but right. they'll do the puberty blockers, the hormones. They'll, they'll do your their comp. They'll really? recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's the division then, right? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, it's about safeguarding children because truly, no, um, no, those the, no, the division is those who say they are safeguarding children by prescribing gender affirming health care they say they're self guard so they say they're guarding the children also correct uh, I, I no they, they think that this is just um, you know they think it's health care they think they? it's health care okay. but it's not okay. it's the okay. opposite okay. can we just okay Do, but let's go to only their views for the moment sure. okay so that's their view that this safeguards the health of children because I think the argument also is that children get very suicidal. Is that one of the things that that argument says? Uh, the Trevor Project and other organizations have tried to track many suicidal statistics around okay. this. They are self-reported, and the truth is well, suicidality is high among children who or minors who experience gender dysphoria, but that suicidality does not decrease or diminish after medical transition. All right, okay. But that is their argument, correct? All right, so the opposite view then, so that's that argument, and that argument has been pretty prevalent and allowed in the public sphere, right? Yes, especially here in the United States. There's been a lot more pushback internationally, including mm -hmm. in um, 
Finland, Sweden, France, the United Kingdom, all these nations have pulled back from the so-called affirmative care model. But did they fighting start harms for with children. it? Yes, they did. That's where it originated. It came over here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, and then when it came here, that was the argument. And then there appears to be now a counter-argument, also a lot from gay people. Is yes. that true? Yes. All right. So that day is the first day I saw that being played out. So I kind of see this as kind of a free speech question as well. Okay, so you have spoken out, uh, you know, and we, what is your view in the first place? Well, my view after reviewing a lot of the And your new alliance too, right. correct? My view after reviewing a lot of the data, and there are 11 studies that demonstrate that many minors, uh, the majority of minors, over 80% who are experiencing gender dysphoria and you, that's naturally real? desist. Okay. Yep. Yeah. They, they have gender incongruence and they're diagnosed as gender dysphoric um, by a doctor. M over 80% of them, 80% by the time that they reach the end of puberty, naturally desist, becoming comfortable in their own bodies as either a butch lesbian or an effeminate gay man. There, that's one of the reasons or why. A straight person, or period. a straight person, period. <laughs> right. Or a straight person. Or a straight person, period. Yeah. But the, yeah. Um, comfortable in one's body. Yeah, okay. Love yourself, don't cut yourselves, kids. Um, the truth is, many doctors, and gays and lesbians in particular, view that medically transitioning a child before they have reached adolescent development is a sense transing the gay away and a new version of conversion therapy. And we see huh. it, it's harmful, and it's one of the main reasons why we stand up to speak ag for safeguarding children against this horrible practice. Okay. All right, so those are the two positions, though, correct, wouldn't you say? I think that there are different gradations. I mean, anytime you bring large yeah. groups of people together, especially groups that um, span the entire political spectrum, uh, you might find a couple of gradations, but this is primarily where we land and that's upon the this. argument, right? The argument is safeguarding children, stopping this medical Well, that's your argument. Yes. The, but there is an oppositional argument that says that gender-affirming care is... Preserving kids, right? Those are the, all I'm saying is- No, no you're okay. right. I mean, they make that argument. Yeah. I believe it's completely fallacy. No, right, okay, uh, that, but, but that's what I'm getting to. All right, so at this demonstration, which I was there, at your invitation, by the way, and I'm happy that you did that, because I got a chance to really see it being played out. You guys were standing in back mm -hmm. of the demonstration, silently, but with signs. Yes, ma'am. And one of your signs, I thought, was it yours? that said uh, no one is born in the wrong body. That's one of the signs that I was holding, and yes no one is born, and that is your belief as well, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Uh, and they, I'm not certain that the outright people had signs at all, did they? Well, uh, the outright people themselves didn't have signs, yeah. but the, there were pe they were tipped off that we were coming. Uh -huh. And so there were counter protesters to our protest, and so they came with large signs, and then more people came with signs and then flags and tried to um, block our signage from being viewed, which, since we're here to talk about That's the First right. Amendment, I mean, I, I, I love the First Amendment. Um, everybody has the right to assemble and to protest, right. and people can stand in front of me and protest if they want and try and hide. And they did. I they saw did. that. I but saw they also that. swarmed all around us, yeah. too, and I think that that kind of gets into a little bit of a gray area where... I, right. I saw that. That's what made me very curious, because your sign seems so kind of correct, in right. a way. No one's born in the wrong body. What could be more dignified in a way but I saw them trying to block you okay so let me get to that all right so what has happened to your position in the press or in wherever in the public space your position then is that if you're going to preserve the health of kids you leave their bodies alone yes and you let them you let those bodies um, grow right of course all right so and, and we have a reason to believe this too I'm yeah. There are, I mean, aside from removing gender from this equation, just talking about the, um, the development of the adolescent brain. Mm -hmm. We've heard in recent years here in Vermont and in Montpelier, we've talked about how um, the adolescent mind isn't fully capable of understanding yeah, the right. consequences of their actions. So in the criminal system, we may move their cases of 22-year-olds to back to family no, court. No, I know it. Th so Which, no, no, not may. They often right. are moved into so family court. So if they court. can't right. weigh right, the right. Uh, adult options, then at they 22... They can't smoke either, can they? They can't. Not in, well, at 22, they can smoke, but they can't. Why would we uh, say, well, 12-year-olds certainly can, can give provide informed consent to sterilization. That's lunacy. Well, let's, let's talk about that a bit. So 
your argument, I guess, supported by data, is also that puberty blockers uh, cause permanent sterilization. Is that well, is that what the data shows? Okay, so there's a path that people begin on, and mm -hmm. you start with the off-label use of puberty blockers, um, and then there are no real good control group or studies on this, yeah, so yeah. the people who start taking puberty blockers inevitably just go right on to cross-sex cross hormones. Now, importantly enough, Lupron, which is the puberty blocker that they tend to prescribe, that... <clears throat> That puberty blocker, um, I totally forgot where I was going with this. Well, what does it do to the body? Oh, thank you. The FDA just recently slapped a warning label on there citing swell brain swelling and harms to children. So okay. Lupron's now just got slapped with an FDA warning. Um, uh, okay. The cross-sex hormones, well, let's just face it, the female body isn't meant to be able to process that much testosterone, and the male body is not meant to right. process that much estrogen. You have an increase in hormone-driven cancers, uh, bone brittle, uh, brittle bones, and off, yes. Right. So these all are right. all dangerous. The, the, human, the whole field of endocrinology is to bring the patient's endocrine system into balance not to throw it completely out of balance. Which is, a, which is out of balance at puberty anyway. Right. Don't you remember? Puberty is difficult for everybody. I know, but Even I the remember. most beautiful kids that you went to high school with had a difficult time and struggled with puberty. Everybody does. Yes. It's not easy. I know. Cutting I can remember. I remember. I remember very yeah. well. Well, at that age, many women destroy their bodies by anorexia, by bulimia, you know, um, which... You bring up a really important yeah, point, because we talk about um, anorexia and bulimia yeah. being a, a dis body dysmorphic That's disorder, and we don't affirm the bulimic or the anorexic saying, you're right, you shouldn't have eaten that, you're fat, go throw up. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's how we treat gender dysphoric children. Well, that's, okay, that is the, right, the opinion. What I want to talk about is what has happened to your views of this controversy. It appears to me that often the views that you're expressing have been censored. Um, if you criticize the so-called trans agenda, often it seems to me in the public spaces, in the media, that gets censored. Is that correct or not? Yes, it is. It sadly is correct. Um, and, and that's what I'm problem. concerned about. Yeah. I am a free speech nut. Yeah. You know, so I don't want that kind of censorship of any views. Do you feel like that is the, the prevalent view is I, even from the president, is to support transgender issues and transgender rights. And that has led to, in your view, is, has it led to the censorship of views like yours, which are questioning the whole idea of puberty blockers and transitioning in kids? Uh, well, yes, and we actually can see evidence of that taking place within just this year. Um, I believe it was the AMA wrote to the Department of Justice, uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland, and was requesting that any kind of information that runs incongruent to um, tr medically transitioning children be censored. Right. Okay. And jailed. We, that p these people should be prosecuted. People like Matt Walsh should be prosecuted. That is, I mean, for somebody who's a First Amendment advocate yeah. like well, this, that's we, that should I'm be the about. sleaziest thing right. that, that the Department that, of Justice could okay. be doing. That's what, that's what is really of concern to me. Right. W that's what I think because I'm a free speech nut, and I've observed this. I saw it that day mm -hmm. as well. Um, and that is of concern to me, that anybody's views on such an important topic is censored, is against the First Amendment and is against the U.S. Constitution. I wanted to talk about a case that I read about in Randolph, too, yeah. this ho whole idea that a male can be in women's locker rooms, in women's bathrooms, mm -hmm. um, and that they can compete in women's sports. I don't get it. I mean, and that, again, is... I guess allowable by the president even, correct? And by Vermont law, unfortunately. Uh, there are real issues here when we talk, well, 
again, self-identification. as Males can identify as female. That means that they have now access to women's locker room spaces. Right, and that happened in, in Randolph, sports, correct? And that's what happened in Randolph. But there's also, in addition to them competing on these teams and taking potentially scholarship places from young girls, there are genuine safety concerns here. Without yeah. a doubt, uh, the adolescent male body is um, stronger. stronger, larger, has more mass than yeah, right. a comparable age uh, female. And if you're talking about um, certain kind of contact or semi-contact sports, that could have serious, I know. serious risks. It, it interests me that, so that girls going to become boys don't play football with men. Oh, they don't? No. And they also know that they can still, uh, even if they medically transition or have been identifying as male, they can still go back and participate. Oh, they can? Oh, Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's here in Vermont, too. Oh my. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So um, anyway, it seems to me that what well, what happened to you? Have your views been censored? Yes, and not only. Well, of course. I mean, I expect the crowd wanted to try and censor me that yeah, day. Right. I wasn't. But that was fair enough. Fair enough, right? I wasn't expecting I mean, it to that hit degree. Nobody you or anything. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, we'll come back to that at some other point. Right, there was okay. somebody backed me into a wall pretty hard. Well. Um, and that circle of love they talked about wasn't, they weren't singing Kumbaya at With me. You, no, no, they were singing. No, I noted that. But um, more alarming was the request for a meeting with Mayor Weinberger that was flat out refused. And I was told by his chief of staff, Jordan, Jordan. Riddell, that she wouldn't legitimize somebody like me or a group like mine. Um, let's talk about censorship. This is a non the LGB Alliance Vermont is part of a, um, is the local chapter of a both national and international organization of nonpartisan L lesbians, gays, and bisexuals. What about we people like the rest of us? We can't be part of that. Well, you can you can be one of our allies, but all this right. is a this is a very okay. uh, specific right. group. Okay, I, I didn't say I wanted to sign up anyway. Designed to, well, maybe we could bring you on as our as our legal advocate. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. But we, we advocate for the rights of oh, gays, uh -huh. lesbians, and yeah. bisexuals in our country All because right, this, is our, uh, this mm -hmm. is our niche. We need to make sure if nobody else is going to be looking out for our rights, clearly they aren't, somebody needs to. And we're happy okay, to stand Okay, so and the mayor, said, we don't have much time left, but the mayor refused to meet with you? Is that correct? Well, Jordan Riddell refused to allow the mayor to meet with me. Oh, wow. Okay, so, we'll so let's keep pressing on him. Oh, All yeah. Right? You you betcha. Okay, yeah. I will too. Yeah. All right, but anyway, so the point I want to advocate always is for free speech. And so I'm happy that you came and talked about that issue today, and good luck. Well, thank okay. you very much. Thanks a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.